Hello and welcome to the Milwaukee Bucks at Chicago Bulls. I am your host, Matthew Ma from Lamps.com, joined here by my resident NBA experts, Drew, the antivirus Norton, and Jason Gobo. So, we have a two and a half point spread in favor of the Bucks. I doubt we see the Bulls ever favorited in this series unless Giannis is out. Um, but does that change how you're approaching it, Drew? Are you... Do you like the Bulls plus two and a half? You like the money line plus one twenty five? Or you sticking with the Bucks, former champions to uh to win this one? Uh, a lot of my friends are, uh, back in Chicago aren't going to be too happy with me, but um, I'm sticking with the Bucks here. I I kind of look at game two like think about how many timely shots the Bulls hit to like ensure that the Bucks didn't complete you know their comeback. I just, I look at this Bulls team and I think that everything's got to go kind of perfect. Like DeRozan had 41, seven and four. Vooch had 24 and 13. Levine had 20. Caruso had 10 assists. Patrick Williams was super close to a double double. It's just like so much had to go right. This Bulls team has won two games against teams all season that are top three seeded in the East and West conference, Eastern Western conference. Um, You know, it was last game. And then in like November against Boston, who was definitely not the team they are today in November. So basically last game was the first time in 20 something games that they had beat a team that was top three in the Eastern or Western conference. Surely. I mean, I'm sure it's going to give them some, amount of confidence going into this game is going to make them feel like, Oh, okay. We actually can be a team like this. And obviously, you know, a lot of people are probably going to be on the bulls because Chris Middleton is out, but I just think that there's a lot of different ways the bucks can score. I think Giannis is going to take a, you know, even more of the workload. I think he's you know going to do it willingly. And I think drew holiday is going to turn into what he does oftentimes in the playoffs, which is, Chuck 18 shots for 20 points. Um, so there's going to be scoring there. I'm not concerned about that. I think they're going to shoot the three pointer. I think they're going to shoot it from deep a little bit better. Um, you know, the bulls were 12, of 25, they shot almost 50%. They got six more shots than Milwaukee. I just, I, I like, obviously it sucks that Middleton's out, but I just think Milwaukee is going to win here. I mean, I, I really do like, I don't have a ton of confidence in the bulls and I don't really want to bet on them until I feel like there's a reason to. I mean, I'm with you. I know Jason may slightly disagree here, but, uh, I mean, you didn't even talk about the biggest factor. Bobby Portis coming back after them <laughs> trying to take him out of the game, obviously dirty play, hitting him in the eye, even though I'm not even sure it was a bulls <laughs> player, but Jason, Talk about the point total and uh, talk about your your little Chicago plus one twenty five bet. Yeah, I, I mean, it, this is kind of when I, I look at these toss up games, you know, I I really do view this as a fifty fifty game, and and odds makers are pretty close. Um, it's I I one hundred percent agree with Drew. the The shots that they made are not shots that they're going to make every game, and everything kind of did have to go right for them to win that game. And that is with everybody healthy and playing like Middleton was five of seven from three point at eight assists. He was really a factor on the defensive side as well. Um, he's gone. Um, so now we're splitting his minutes between Pat Connaughton and Grayson Allen. And that is a major drop off and they could potentially get hot from three and kind of act like, I don't know, a subsidized version of what Tyler hero does. And, <laughs> Uh, but I think it's a knockoff version. I think this is store brand cereal. I don't think you're getting the type of production that you're going to get from these guys. So I, I don't know how happy I am trading them off for Middleton. And Drew's like, as much as Giannis has done, he went 33, nine and 18. I don't like, you know, is he going to need to go 40, 30 and 20 to, for, for Milwaukee tonight? I, I don't know who picks up this slack. Every time I want to rely on Drew Holiday, he just seemingly doesn't show up for me. I, you know, his shooting is still not really where I want to be. And if we're going to factor in some Alex Caruso defense, who is an absolute ball hog, like that's going to be tough for him. 
Um, Vucevic has been playing really well in this series and getting his numbers. Brook Lopez is not the most defensive center in the world. And we know that they've both been getting buckets because they both can, can shoot well. Um, I just think this is a toss up. I, I think at home for Chicago actually does matter a little bit more where they did play better this season. Um, and I just think plus 125 is a value when you're missing a, a player that actually really does matter for the Bucks. And as much as Giannis can go in and, and drop his points, as we've seen with some of these playoff games, one player can have a massive game and it absolutely doesn't matter. Some of these other players don't step up. So that's just my concern. I just find the Bulls to be a value, but I, I do agree with what you like. The shot quality stuff that I saw from this game was, you know, Bucks are going to win that game. I think like 75, 80% of the time. And it makes sense because DeRozan just was absolutely on fire. So um, with that being said, I obviously expect shooting regression, uh, actually really kind of on both sides. I don't know if I'm going to see a ton of from, from content and Allen to really chip in here. And as much as everything did go right, that total still hit 224 barely, you know, in that, that game too. Um, and that's with everybody shooting absolutely lights out. So I think we see a little bit of a drop off. Um, I think we see a game somewhere in between game one and game two. Game one was a little bit extreme on the defensive side. I know people have been pointing to pace in the playoffs and Chicago and Milwaukee come in behind Memphis and Minnesota, but they're playing at essentially an average pace at hundred. I mean, they're at 101, but like, so it's not this drastic difference and the defensive rating. I mean, both these two teams have actually played great defense through two games. Um, I, I know obviously game two, you may look and go, oh, Milwaukee didn't play well. They just hit shots. It was kind of like Brandon Ingram against the Suns. Um, so I think we see obviously a little bit of regression. I think the under is well in play here at 22 and a half. Um, and I, I feel actually really good about that compared to just picking them on any line. If you're really taking one basic bet from this game. I think one thing you didn't talk about though, that it's a point to the under, but maybe a point against the bulls is with Grayson Allen playing the chance of an injury on the bulls goes way up. Like, so I mean, was Caruso. So I, you know, Caruso could be fed up. He's like, I'm looking for a little revenge here. You I know? would love to see a hockey fight between Caruso and Grayson <laughs> Allen in the middle of a basketball game. I would be so happy. All right. Let's go to uh, player props and shout out to our boy Braxton for making uh, a really good decision last game and placing a pet on DeMar DeRozan first, first field goal. Not sure how he figured that one out, but it worked. Uh, we're going to skip those ones and, uh, Drew, I'm going to ask you your favorite player prop on the night. Yeah, I'm going to throw a little, little something funky your guys way. So I had put in the, uh, the player prop page the other night for DeRozan and Giannis to go for 35 plus and Giannis came up two points short. He literally had the ball right by the rim with five seconds left and they called an offensive foul on him because the league is extremely soft these days. You can't move your elbows unless it's like this. And it would have hit. It was, it was a plus eight twenty three. Um, so I'm, I'm going to run that back and I'm actually going to throw drew holiday 20 plus points too. I like, um, you know, plus eight eighty one. Giannis and Drew Holiday are going to have to do so much of the work. And, and every time that either Giannis or Chris Middleton is out um, and Drew Holiday is playing, he, he turns into a chucker. He turns into an, an instant chucker. Um, you know, you can go buy one at your, at your local Walmart or Target, uh, but he turns into an instant chucker. Some chuck roast. Some what? chuck roast, you know, <laughs> some chuck chicken. Is it plus, um, uh, did you say 20 plus or 25 plus for Drew Holiday? 20 plus for Drew Holiday. Okay. Um, 35 plus for Giannis. 35 plus for DeRozan. Plus DeRozan is cool. Cool. Um, so DraftKings <laughs> is DraftKings is the way to go then. Um, but DeRozan, game two DeRozan is much more similar to what we're going to see the rest of the series I think then game one DeRozan and Giannis to get 35, he's going to have to pretty much play the whole game. So to me, I think at plus 900, you throw a quarter of a unit on this bad boy and you just see, see what happens. I want to put a stipulation that you're not allowed to place this bet unless you can say into the Kimbo. 
So sure, sure, yeah. So Drew, that's fine. Go ahead. Oh, that, that that's it. That's really. That's just, like, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> no, but I I like the bet. I actually think the Mar- like. I, I see where you're coming from, Drew. I'm a little scared about Demar scoring 35 plus, but I think in general the value of this bet's pretty, pretty insane. Because I, I know, I know, JC, you're kind of joking. Like, what does Giannis have to do then? I, I truly think he has a 40 point game tonight. I'm, I think he's going to end up in the 38 to 41 range. Um, well, DeRozan's going to, DeRozan's going to get the home whistle. That I mean, too. you know how many times DeRozan, you know. One, two, you guys dribbles. Can, you just please keep making points for the Bulls while while doing these player props because I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. Where's a Giannis sixty plus and an A? Where's the yes. where's the Bobby Portis sixty plus with a bloody eye? That's a good question. That's all right, Jason. Yeah. Your uh, I, player prop. It's someone who's a massive factor in game two was Alex Caruso. Um 10 assists, absolute monster on the defensive side. He's, you know, getting big minutes, played 33 in game one, um, 38 in game two. I'm, I'm going back to the well on the, the assists. I mean, four and a half at, at plus 105. You know, I know he didn't have a ton in game one, but that's because nobody shot the ball well. Um, I, I don't expect him to shoot 50% from three again or 50% from the field, but, you know, somewhere in the mid 40s is probably where I see Chicago. So it's not that much of a trail off. Um, you know, having Zach Levine and having, you know, DeRozan and, and a couple other guys and Vucevic, you know, around you brings some good opportunities for assists. Um, you know, we saw at times this season, Caruso be a primary ball handler when they really need to get the offense going. And that was obviously the case in game two. I don't see any reason to go away from it. Um, yeah. And there's just so many opportunities with other guys around him. I like the pick and roll situation with Vucevic. He's also a guy who can hit some outside shots. And then you obviously have Levine, who's a great catch and shoot guy. So, um, yeah, I, I think five is well within his range of outcomes, at, and especially at plus odds. That's, that's great value. Yeah. I'm going uh, to another player prop, which is hit in both games, yet you get plus values. And that's Vucevic over 11 and a half boards. I see no reason why he would be slowing down. Um, you need to hit this plus one Oh five was at like 45% of the time to split. Even I, I just don't see why he would slow down. I mean, 17, 13, he did get eight offensive rebounds in the first game. So that's, that helped get to that 17 number. Maybe not eight offensive rebounds, but he still has been very efficient on the offensive glass. I just don't even feel like I need to defend this pick. I think this is just a weird line from the sports books that, I just don't really understand if I'm quite honest and uh, I'm going to take advantage of it. Some t- they don't check every single line they put out there. A lot of this is generated by, you know, advanced metrics and data feeds. And sometimes it comes out with stuff funky. And I feel like that's the case for this one. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um, I, I, I don't like the bucks. I, I don't like how the bucks are rebounding on the defensive defensive end right now. So I think Vooch easily could get four or five offensive rebounds this game. And then that should be cake for him to clean up on the other end, you know, get the, get the rest of them. So I, I like that one. Yeah. I got the, the drew stamp of approval. I mean, that's, that's really better than for. winning the bet. That's exactly <laughs> what you're, that's what you're looking for. Let's be honest. <laughs> Any other player props you guys want to shout out? Um, the classic um, from Jason means he's got one that he he doesn't want to say, but he does want to say. Um, I mean, Drew Holiday turnovers plus one twenty over three and a half. Um, you know he had six last game, and you know he's going to have to pick up a little bit more of the ball usage given Middleton's out. Um, so I I think that's an area that you can go for for. Value. Have, he, he's not particularly like the biggest turnover guy in the world. Um, so I, like, I, I don't think like this is a normal thing for him. He's not Trey young. Who's just going to have five plus turnovers in each game of the series. Um, so that's kind of, it's, it's more of a hesitation, but like the value is pretty good. If, if 
like I'm a believer in the Caruso defense and the usage bumps. So it should lead to a little bit more turnovers. Um, so that's kind of where I'd, I'd look to. Yeah. I mean, but he's got, he's got 10 in this series. He had four first games, six second games. Yeah. So yeah, I actually had this written down and I think this goes to show I need to stop with the Bobby Portis jokes and maybe focus on the video a little bit more because totally forgot <laughs> to talk about it. So our bets for tonight, Drew and I are on the Bucks minus two and a half. I was going to go as far as I was going to come up and be like, you know what? Screw it. Bucks minus five and a half. But uh, the odds really aren't that good for alternate lines at all. So I'm going to stick with my two and a half. Chicago Bulls plus 125 from the Jason Gilbo side of things. I think all of us on the under 222 and a half. Despite being on that under, don't mind Drew's bet of 35 plus for DeMar Rosen. Giannis into Takimbo and then 20 plus for Drew Holiday at plus 900 odds. Alex Russo over four and a half assists. Nikola Vucevic over 11 and a half boards at plus 105 for both of those bets. And then plus 120 for Drew Holiday to have over three and a half turnovers, something he has done in each of the last two games. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can, you can click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when these videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike, comment down below your favorite bets, and we will see you for the next one very soon.